One thing that doesn't seem to be helping the markets too much this morning is that $900 billion relief deal that Congress agreed to last night. One of the major sticking points over the weekend was Republican Senator Pat Toomey's push to prevent the Fed from reviving the emergency lending programs that were set up under the CARES Act earlier this year. But that issue has now been resolved, at least we think. Joining us right now to explain is Senator Toomey himself. And, Senator, you sure know how to grab attention and headlines over the weekend. Uh, what right. happened? Is this a situation where you don't chest the chairman, uh, Jay Powell? What, what happened? No, no, that's uh, nothing of the sort. And there were no surprises here. Um, uh, a little bit of background. First of all, these facilities were always intended to be temporary. In fact, when we were writing the bill, and I was one of the two Republican senators writing it back in March, I wanted a September 30th deadline because these facilities, let's keep in mind, their purpose was to restore normal functioning in the private capital and lending markets, not to replace those markets, not to be an all-purpose source for fiscal policy, but to stabilize markets. Because remember, back in March, there was a real concern that the capital markets were going to freeze up completely. And that could be, of course, catastrophic. We put a December 30th, uh, December 31st deadline. And then a legal interpretation came along that suggested, well, maybe that deadline doesn't really apply to these facilities after all because of the, of the way it was drafted. And Democrats started to increasingly call on the extension of these programs indefinitely. Senator Schumer sent a letter to Secretary Mnuchin and Powell to do that. The, the House passed a bill commanding the Fed to use the municipal lending facility to do 10-year, 25 basis point loans to any municipality uh, without even having to attest that they couldn't get credit elsewhere. So really, literally turning the Fed into the lender of first resort. So my concern was there would be tremendous political pressure to misuse these, to morph these liquidity facilities that had successfully restored market liquidity and turn them into an instrument of fiscal policy, which is a terrible idea. And so I began back in the summer a, a, a series of, of measures. We had legislation in September that we voted on that would shut these down, strip the money out, and preclude their restarting. And some of the final details we haggled over over the weekend. And there was the, the Democrats thought that they could uh, try to, uh, you know, make a, a sort of sensation out of it. But it was a flash in the pan. We got to an agreement. And the good news is these programs will be the temporary facilities they were intended to be. All right, a couple of questions. First yeah. of all, would you not support reopening facilities like this? Because it seems to me like the language does allow for opening similar programs, just not exactly the same, some of these things. Is it your contention that that the Fed should have to come before Congress again before being able to open anything similar? So, great question. So, so what I think is really unique and important uh, about shutting these down is the unprecedented nature, right? Direct corporate lending by the Fed uh, by virtue of uh, direct primary market bond purchases, direct lending by the Fed to middle market companies where the Fed would dictate the terms and decide you know, who would qualify and for, for under what circumstances, direct lending to municipalities. This is an explicit allocation of credit. These are unprecedented, extraordinary powers, and they're only justifiable in a real emergency. And so the Fed recognized that. They came to Congress back in March and said, this is what we'd like to do. Will you fund it? And, if, and then they set them up. And I voted for that. And I supported that because I thought we were in such an emergency. We are clearly not in a financial crisis at this point. We haven't been for months. And so if, the, if we get back to a terrible circumstance next year or 10 years from now, and the Fed and the Treasury come together and say, hey, this is the kind of facility we need, I would support that under, under, the, under the right circumstances. But it shouldn't be sort of a, a permanent vehicle that's there for a certain, you know, some politicians to decide, let's, let's take this over and start doing subsidized loans. What about your thoughts just on state and local municipal aid? Obviously, that was a huge sticking point. There's not going to be that state or local aid in the $900 billion bill that it sounds like congressional leadership has approved. Um, are you opposed to, I, I, I recognize some of your concerns in the past on this have, have been that states would use it to bail out um, the problems that they've developed over a long period of time, things like with the retirement plans that they've promised um, their state workers. Are you opposed to any state or municipality, though, getting money for a revenue shortfall 
maybe through no fault of their own, just well, the, the storm that is COVID. You I, know, I, I, I look at the money that was caused by COVID, the shortfall versus states' own problems that they've had for, for long periods of time before this. Well, Becky, I think we have to put in the context of what we've already done. I mean, the, the CARES Act back in March sent something on the order of just about $500 billion to states and municipalities. And we're sending more in this bill, not as a blank check for states to allocate as they see fit, but picking up the tab for all kind of state expenses. We're still paying much more than the historic federal share for Medicaid. So there's been an enormous amount of money has gone out to the states. And look, it turns out there's, there are states that are in a great place, right? Their revenue has been excellent. In fact, exceeding expectations, in some cases running ahead of last year. And then in other cases, you know, take the case of New Jersey. Um, hit very hard by COVID, had a very, very, uh, you know, costly shutdown of their economy for an extended period. And then they pass a budget where they increase government spending by 4 percent. I guess they're not that worried about, uh, you know, where this is going to come from. I'd also point out that states have taxing authority, too. And it's not obvious to me why this ought to happen at the federal level at, at yet another round after we've already done hundreds of billions of dollars for states and municipalities. I think uh, given the disparity in how different states spend money and how they tax their citizens, it's probably at this point, and given all the money we've already paid for, probably better not to have yet another round of direct payments to state, states and municipalities. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.